that. Bunny! Yes? Ow, that really hurt. If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who is it nowadays that's sweeping the nation? But only real fans, true hardcore fans, the cats eating the cake, who have been with us since the beginning. <laughs> the cat can't eat the cake. The cat was trying, was getting ready to eat the cake. The cat can't sniff the cake. But only true fans, real hardcore fans, who have been with us since day one, would know two facts about the both of us. Two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, America's hottest will they or won't they couple, the next Sam and Diane, it's Bunny and Steve. First and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that when you're not doing the podcast, you work on cultivating your intense porcelain doll collection. So tell us, Bunny, what got you into the world of porcelain doll collecting? Um, I would have to say the movie May uh, was the gateway drug to porcelain doll figures. Uh, of course, I immediately found some of the, the Asian artists uh, and their work in porcelain, which is just fucking top rate. Um, and I, I, I have a collection of porcelain dolls, uh, that it's really more about the value of the dolls and, than the amount of the dolls, like, yeah. uh, so I have three, you know, uh, and that's enough to qualify me as a rabid collector. That's having uh, a collection, yeah. I, I... Um, I am currently moving away from the porcelain doll collection, and I'm aiming more toward uh, salt and pepper shakers that look like titties. Nice. Nice. That's a good collection. Yeah. That's a good collection. That's something you can stand behind. Yes. And the second thing that you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So what I like to do at this section of the podcast is just find a story from the history books maybe people don't know too well and reword it via my own unique storytelling style, my panache. And that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of Steve's Historic Approximations! Dun, dun. <laughs> or shap, as we like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Personally, I like the name shap. And hey, fun fact, in Cleveland, Ohio, shap stands for the Senior Homeowner Assistance Program, which gives Cleveland, Ohio seniors grants so they can do home repair and maintenance. This is only available to seniors age 60 and up, so hey... If you're an old fart living in Cleveland, call area code 216-664-2833 weekdays from 8 to 5. You're welcome. That is 100% true. Anywho, today on the old Shappity Shap Shap, I have a nice short chap about an overlooked hero in the American space race. And also, be sure to pay attention, boys and girls and gender rebels, because at the end of the Shap, there's a big twist at the end. A Shyamalan, if you will. So, just be prepared. So, okay. Today's chef is about a woman named Judith Love Cohen. And, Bunny, you can put up that black and white picture now. The first picture. You can put that up. There yeah, we go. Judith Love Cohen. This chef is about Judith Love Cohen and her work in the American aerospace industry. This woman's work was invaluable, but why do we not know about her? Because she's a woman. It's sad that so many women uh, worked in the aerospace industry, helped us get to space. So many black women worked on the aerospace industry, and we're just now finally getting stories out into the public consciousness about the women and the minorities that helped get us to space and this is one of those stories. She was born in 1933 in Brooklyn. And man, was she ever smart. Because as the story goes, 
in fifth grade, her classmates would pay her to do their math homework. <laughs> oh, nice. So not only, how cool is that? Not only was she super smart, she was a hustler. Yes. And I, I really like that. So she grew up studying math and engineering. She went to USC, and she was such a pioneer. She was such a pioneer to get into engineering that she got a, her bachelor's degree and her master's degree in engineering without ever meeting another woman in the engineering program. Okay. That's how much of a pioneer she was that she was the only woman in the entire system. So she's a whiz. She's an engineering whiz, a science whiz. And so in 1952, she got a job with a company called North American Aviation, NAA. They were an aerospace company founded in 1928. Uh, what was aerospace in 1928? Were you just uh, shooting... You, I imagine it was just a slingshot and pebble. <laughs> pebbles to the moon. Fucking, it's 1928, for shit's sake. But the North American Aviation Company helped build a number of now historic aircrafts, both army planes and spacecrafts. And in the 1950s and 1960s, NAA, North American Aviation, started working with NASA. And so Judith, Judith Love Cohen was there, too. And as is often the case, history remembers the bald white men wearing ties and smoking. Yes. Who helped us get to space. Yes. Uh, history remembers the white men in short sleeve dress shirts with a cigarette hanging from their mouth and glasses who helped get us into space. The pasty white men who worked for NASA, and history just conveniently glosses over the black people and the women who also worked for NASA and help us get this thing, including Judith Love Cohen. And it's a damn shame because she was a huge name when it came to helping NASA. She worked on the guidance computer yes. for the LGM-30 Minute Man, also known as the Minute Man Missile which was a deterrent that was created to scare the Russians. Oh, yeah. And it was like, oh, the Russians, they've got rockets, and they can, they can just blow us out of the water at any second. We need something to scare them. So she works on the Minuteman missile, and, and so, you know, that was created to fight the Russians in case they started attacking the U.S. So Judith Love Cohen helped deter the USSR from killing us. Already good job, Judith. Yes. You haven't even gotten to the main thing. But already, you've done a lot and fucking good job. So, so also, she helped create the NASA abort guidance system. This is what saved the Apollo 13 astronaut. So, uh, so who saved Tom Hanks in space? Judith Love Cohen helped save yeah. Tom Hanks in space. And don't you forget it. So Apollo 13, disaster hits the astronauts. They, they can't use the guidance system and they can't use the navigation system because electricity and water are extremely limited. They need to save the electricity and the water that they can. And both the guidance system and the navigation system use electricity and use water. So the abort guidance system that Judith Love Cohen worked on was used to get the Apollo 13 astronauts back to Earth safely. Judith Love Cohen did that, and she deserves a lot more respect for her work in getting Americans on the surface of the frickin' moon. But that's not all she did. She also worked uh, on the TDRS, which stands for Tracking and Data Relay Satellite. This is what NASA uses and what the U.S. government uses to <coughs> communicate with each other. So if one portion of the Army is trying to talk to another portion of the Army, yeah, that was Judith Love Cohen. Yeah. She helped create the freaking satellites that are still in space that are making NASA able to talk to people at the, on the goddamn space station out there. 
That was Judith Love Cohen doing that. The Lab fact that Villanova, Judith... We have flipped pictures. Oh, yeah. Uh, flip to the Apollo 13 people. I should have said that beforehand. I, I'm just really into this shack. Yeah. So I totally forgot that. I'm just so passionate about the fact that Judith Love Cohen did so much to help America, and nobody knows her fucking name. It, yeah. This is a crime that people do not know more about Judith Love Cohen. But here's the thing. So, yeah, she helped create the Minuteman missile. She helped create the abort guidance system. Hi, Kat. You're not getting a spin-off, okay? Please don't turn off the podcast. Don't get on the computer. Don't get on the... You're just, you're just purring right into the microphone. Okay, this is happening. Uh, hello. Hello. You're just in front of everything. Okay, that's fine. That's this cat is named Gaspacho, which is a reference uh, that I took from the show I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, the greatest show on television, despite what Bunny says. <laughs> you are on my podcast notes. No, I need to read this. Stop. Okay, okay. You can stay there, cat. Just don't cover up my podcast notes. I'm, I, I'm in the middle of shaft, dude. I'm in the middle of shaft. Okay. So she helped create the Minuteman missile. She helped get the Apollo 13 astronauts back to uh, Earth. She helped create the TDRS, which is what NASA and the US government uses to communicate. But that's not, but that's all like 50s and 60s and maybe a little bit of the 70s. She had such a long career. She kept working and kept working. She also worked on something else you might have heard of. It's called the freaking Hubble! Yes. The fact that she worked on the Apollo missions in the 60s and had such a long career that she also helped create and launch the Hubble Space Telescope in the year 1990, that's a career and a half is what yes. that is. That is insane. What a career. She also had quite a personal life. She had uh, four kids. In the 1950s, she married a fellow engineer and had three kids with that engineer, including one of the kids ended up being Neil Siegel, who would go on to be a very famous engineer and scientist. Neil Siegel helped create the US Army's first unmanned air vehicle. Yes. The first ever unmanned aerial <coughs> vehicle was created by Judith Love Cohen's son. The, yes. the, the things that her family helped create. Don't switch to the third one yet. You yeah, son no, of a bitch. I, 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 it was a slip of the finger. Okay. You son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. So you might be thinking, gee... I bet that Judith Love Cohen gave birth to a whole brood of super smart geniuses. Well, that's not entirely the case. Okay, so she divorced her first husband, and then in the 60s, she met a guy named Thomas, and they got married, and she got pregnant with her fourth child. And as the story goes, she refused to take any time off work. She said, I'm going to keep working. My work is so important, I'm not going to take time off work. I'm going to keep working up until the point that I go to labor. I am still going to be here in the lab working on fucking science. And so she's sciencing it up, and she's like six months pregnant. She's sciencing it up. She's eight months pregnant. She's sciencing it up. It's nine and a half months. She's nine and a half months pregnant. She's still working. She's still working. And she, she's working so much that she is at work, working, when she goes into labor. And her colleagues are all, Judith, you are in labor right now. Please go to the damn hospital. And she's, she was all like, no, I'm working on a really difficult engineering problem here. This is very, I can't leave. I'm working on a problem. But the colleagues were all like, Judith, Judith, Please just fucking go. So being the insane worker that she was, she printed out her work, the problem that she was working on, and as she's being rushed to the hospital, she's 100% calm because she's working on her work as she's being rushed to the hospital. Yeah. And she's being rushed into the 
inside the hospital. You're going to be fine, Judith. I know. I'm just, I'm almost done with this engineering problem. Okay, push, Judith. I can't. I almost have this problem done. Can you just leave me alone? I'm almost done with solving this. So close. Just leave me alone. She gets to the hospital, and finally she's like, I did it. I finished the problem. I did it. I finished it. Okay, get me a phone. Oh, okay, boss, I figured it out. Okay, this is what you do. You do this, and then you put the thing on the thing, and then you carry the two, and then uh, whatever, ipso facto, and then there you go. We solved it. Okay, I'll see you later. Click. I figured out the problem. Now I'm, can, now I'm ready to give birth. And so she pushes the baby out and gives birth to Jack fucking Black. <laughs> now you can switch it, funny. Yep. That's a picture of Judith Love Cohen, a genius who helped get man on the moon next to her son who was in Gulliver's Travels and Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. But she loves him anyway. That is insane. So yes, not all of uh, Judith Love Cohen's children were engineering geniuses. Yes. Uh, also, what a Shyamalan, huh? Yeah. What a Shyamalan. Apparently... Uh, Judith Love Cohen was married three times. So she was married to a guy in the 50s and then had three kids and then divorced him, married another guy in the 60s, had one kid with him, divorced him, then married a third guy and said, no more kids. I just gave birth to Jack Black. I'm good now. Yes. <laughs> so no more children. But apparently they got divorced in the 60s and it's like, oh, where should this kid go? And then the dad said, I'll take him. I'm moving to L.A. I don't know. Maybe you could be a fucking actor or something. And that's how we got Jack Black. Yeah. And it's just astounding to me that, that this picture exists of an aerospace engineering legend next to her son, Jack Black. That's just <laughs> fascinating to me. Yes. That, that, like, you saved the Apollo 13 astronauts. Uh, have fun at the premiere of Shallow How. <laughs> but oh you could God. take so, you could take so. different looks at it. You know, she she could also look at it like finally one of my kids is funny. <laughs> the way that I see it, and this is probably due to the fact that I have an older brother who made my life a living hell. But yeah. the way I see it in my head is. If I, I put myself in Jack Black's shoes and I'm like, God damn it, I'll never live up to my brother who created the U.S. Army's first unmanned air vehicle. Sure, I'm Jack Black, but I'll never be Neil Siegel. Yeah. You know, like, like, sure, I made two Jumanji films, but look at what my mom did. Like, I would see myself as a failure if I was in Jack Black's shoes, so I feel bad for him being in a family that created such legitimate geniuses. But to be fair, that first Tenacious D album, fucking incredible. Fucking incredible. This is a tribute. You know? That, that is a work of genius in and of itself. But, yeah. So, Judith Love Cohen, one of the mothers of NASA, aerospace pioneer, a woman who helped us get on the surface of the moon, and also the mom of the man who helped create Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. This has been Steve's Historic Approximations. I, I am really proud of this one. It's a short one, but it's an important one. Uh, Judith Love Cohen, despite having given birth to Jack Black, an incredible name in the history of science and one that deserves more credit. Yes. Yes. And uh, that's the end of that, and cut on that.